All right, Shalom. You know, first and foremost, I want to start by giving all praises, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashim, Yahushua Bashim, Rokakodash, and His only begotten, and His only begotten Son. You know, um, this is a, a quick lesson through the Spirit. You know, this is uh, Galatians chapter four, verse sixteen. Am I become therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? You know, and one thing about the Scriptures. Truth will set you free, man. <clears throat> John 8 and 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You know, so we free. You know, spiritually we free. You know, our minds is not corrupted with the bullshit and the doctrine of this uh, world. You know, which is this world is run by Satan. You know, we're free from, we're free from a lot of things. We're free from captivity. We're free from sin. We're free from death. You know, we ain't got to uh, ever go through death again after this, you know, after this, um, after this go around, man. Because Yahweh Shai made the ultimate sacrifice. Lamentation um, 4 tells us that we ain't going to never have to go into captivity again. This is uh, Lamentations 4 and... 22, the punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. He will visit thine iniquity, O daughter of Edom. He will discover thy sins. So we ain't got to worry about going into captivity ever, ever again. Because we we have learned, you know, we have we have finished the course which the Most High had us run. You know, which we had to learn that, that, way, that, that left hand side, you know, in order to, you know, experience to order to govern and to judge righteously man we had to know good and evil you know and we don't experience the evil and it's going to come a time we're going to experience the good you know in which which we have experienced it but not as much as we're going to experience it in the kingdom of heaven you know but the point of the lesson being man have i become your enemy because i tell you the truth you know like the scripture says real quick amos uh they hate him that rebuke it in the gate you know Amos five and ten, they hate him that rebuketh in the gate, and that abort that, and they abort, abort him that speak uprightly. Because, you know, if you want to get into depth, it's not our words, you know, which the, everybody knows that the words that we speaking are not our words. You know, because these are the words of Yahweh Hashem Al Shah, which we are commanded to speak, because that's the job of a prophet. You know, a prophet what does what? Prophesy. You know, the, that prophet is basically like that uh, mediator between the Most High and uh, well, not not mediator. Yahweh Shai is the mediator between the Most High and man, but um, the prophet, you know, it is uh, basically the mouthpiece of Yahweh Hashem Al Shai. You know, um, Ezekiel two and seven, and thou shalt speak my words unto them. Whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are most rebellious. And that's what we're doing. We speak the Lord's words unto you people, man. And if uh, he that receives you receives me. Because if you don't receive the words we're saying, you're not, I mean, it's not affecting us, man. You know? You're, you're, you're not receiving the Lord. <laughs> This is uh, Matthew 10 and 40. He that receiveth you receiveth me, and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. So it's really a process. If you don't receive the words that we're saying, you're not receiving Yahweh Shai. If you're not receiving Yahweh Shai, you're not receiving the Father. Because Yahweh Shai is that mediator. He's our, he's our attorney, you know. First Timothy two and five, but there, for there is one mediator, and one for for there is one God and one mediator between God and men, and the man Hamashiach Yahweh Shah. So Yahweh Shah is that mediator between the Most High and men. You know he's our attorney, man. Let me quickly uh, search this word mediator through the Spirit. Okay, 
um, it says one who mediates um, to intervene to to be or divide in the middle um, one who intervenes between two disputing disputing parties <laughs> and that's and it's crazy because the disputing part the parties is talking about you know the most high well really talking about uh well actually it says origin originally applied to him christ who is christian mythology which is bullshit mediates between god and man meaning one who intervenes between two parties and that how shot is that person who mediates between two people which is the most high man you know I, I thought it was another scripture in uh, the book of Job saying something about a mediator. I think it is. <clears throat> I believe it is another scripture in the book of Job about a mediator. Now, you know, it's really escaping me. I believe it is another precept speaking about the mediator between God and man. <laughs> But um, well, like the script, like like it said, man, one who intervenes in your shot is uh, basically, you know, taking um, <clears throat> he's mediating for us, you know, to divide in two equal parts, to have later and be in middle, act and act as a mediator. So your shot is that mediator between the Most High and us, and man, you know. You know, and through Yahweh Shot, which the hey, the spirit is flowing, um, is jumping all over the place. You know, but you know, Yahweh Shot is that mediator between God and man, and and it's very needed. You know, because we are in sinful flesh, and our righteousness is as filthy rags. You know, and we desire to you know be perfected, but first we gotta go through a lot of trials to be perfected, man. You know. <clears throat> Isaiah 64 and 6, but we are uh, but we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousness as are as filthy rags, and we do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. So we are we are, you know, our uh, righteousness is as filthy rags. So, you know, the most I knows we're not gonna be perfect in this flesh, you know, seeing that dwell, that dwelleth in me. Romans chapter 7 verse 17 now then it is no more the I that do it but sin that dwelleth in me for I knew that in me there that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing so in these bodies dwelleth no good thing man for to will is present with me but how to perform that which is good I find not and that's hard man being in his flesh you know we we have to and we we um <clears throat> excuse me for the will you know, we desire to do the right thing, but, you know, it's kind of impossible to be perfect in this flesh for for the good that I would. I do not. But the evil which I would not that I do. And the only person that has been came in the flesh and conquered it perfect would not sin was Yahweh Shah, you know, and we as being service of Yahweh Shah desiring to be perfect. But we just fall short of the glory. Like the scripture says, um. Short of the glory. No, is it fell short? All oh, have fell short. Fell short of the glory. No, all oh, fall short. Let me see. Fall short to work out for me. Nope, that's not it. Let me see. Ah, come short. It says, come short of the glory. This is Romans 3 and 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So, you know, we desire to, you know, we actually please the Most High by not going off because sin or could you sin is transgression of law. This is verse 19 for the God, for the good that I, w I would, I for the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not that I do. And that's and that's that's to being in this wicked ass flesh, man. You know, that's why our bodies have to be changed. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more me. I mean, no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that 
when I would do good, evil is present with me. Right. You know, for I dwell in the law, the delight in the law of the most high after the inward man. But I, but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and be bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. So you really can't. We got that's why we have to get out of these bodies, you know, because you desire to do good. You desire to do this. You desire to do that. But you end up doing the opposite of what you want to do. And when you do the opposite of what you want to do, you know, it just brings you all back down to square one, man. Basically, you feel like shit. You know, you praying to the most high to ask him to forgive you, you know, you not to get proud and, you know, against the most high, remaining humble, praying, uh, hoping he can have mercy on you for the things that you do, you know, and you constantly praying to him. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind. And that's these bodies, man. You know, it's a war. It's a war in your own body and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. So we must strive hard to to fight off these demons, man, and fight the sin that ever so besets us, man. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? Who is going to deliver us? Yahweh Shai is going to deliver us. Uh, damn, I just made a statement. Uh, it's, it's the spirit. I think not God through Yahweh. I thank God through Yahweh Shai Mashiach, our Lord. So then with me, the mind, the mind, I'm the mind. I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. So we desire to serve in our minds. We know, you know, we got to do this. We got to do this, you know, according to what the scripture says. But in my flesh is we just subject to the law of sin, man. You know, in our bodies, you know, it's like in our minds, you know, we serve the law of Yahweh, but in our, in our wicked flesh, man, the law of sin, which ever so besets us. Okay, Hebrews 12 and 1. Wherefore, seeing we are also also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay hold on eternal, let's lay aside every weight and the sin which ever so that slot. I'm going to start for the top. Hebrews 12 and 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. The reason why I pull that scripture is because it says about the sin that so easily besets us, man. You know, because sinning, we sin every day, man. But we 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 pray to Yahweh Bashem al for mercy, man. You know, this is uh, Romans 8 and 6. For to be carnally, carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And that's what we're fighting for. You know, we're fighting to be, you know, in peace and have a spiritual mind, not a carnal mind. You know, verse seven, because the carnal mind is enmity with God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither can indeed can it be. So a carnal mind is enmity with the most high. You know, the Lord desires spirituality. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. So, I mean, we that's why we got to get out of these bodies. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. That's why, you know, we allowed to do this work because we're in the spirit and not in the flesh. If so, be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have none of not the spirit of Hamashiach, he is none of his, right? So that's the, that's the whole, yeah, because we have the spirit, we're able to do this, man. And if Hamashiach be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness, man. And that's how we're able to conduct, and that's how we still live in, because of Yahweh Shah, because he is life, man. In Yahweh Shah is life, man, you know. And I believe that was all on my spirit to get, you know. <clears throat> I'm going I'm I'm to read verse 12, therefore, in 13, therefore, brethren, be ye, be, we are debtors to, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh, for if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die, but if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of your body, ye shall live, you know, and let's go get that word mortify real quick, I like to go to the online etymology dictionary, because we got to mortify the deeds of our body, man, to kill to destroy, overwhelm, punish, 
to um to cause death to put to death literally to make dead so we got to make dead the old deeds of our bodies producing death you know death um to die to make to do you know to rub away to subdue the flesh by abstinence and discipline so we gotta subdue the subdue the flesh by discipline and abstinence man you know scripture speak of that uh, mortifying your, the deeds of your body uh, Colossians 3 and 5 mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth fornication uncleanness inordinate affection evil some consumptions and covetousness, which is idolatry. So we got to destroy those things, which are, you know, we got to mortify. We got to make them dead, man. For which things sake, for which things sake, the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. So we got to destroy those things, you know. We got to mortify. We got to destroy those things, make them dead. You know, like it says right here, to kill. We got to kill that junk. We got to, it says, to subdue the flesh by abstinence and discipline. Let's look at that word abstinence. Here we go. Forbearance in in of appetites. Um, self restraint, having integrity, withhold, keep back, keep off. So we gotta keep keep that stuff off of, off of us. You know, we gotta keep those deeds, especially of sexual appetites. So that's that goes into lust and all that. Um, to stretch equal, equally, especially of sexual appetites, but also in middle grade of food, fine luxury, forbearance and indulgence of the appetites, forbearance and indulgence, indulgence, indulgence of of the appetites. So we gotta hold that back. We gotta restrain ourselves, man. We gotta keep that that you know off of us. You know, keep that off our flesh. You gotta mortify. We gotta keep, make it dead. 